David Kubiak who actually probably has made an introduction, but he is going to give us an update on the government center of the project. There have been some changes with that that we would be interested in. So I did pass around a package of information that I put together. Most I put together this information mostly from the public information that's available on the web. If you search Bullfinch Crossing, which is the new official name of the project, uh, you'll see the official website by the developer and most of this information and much more is on that website. So take a look at that website. Uh, the front piece here is just a description of various elements, the project as a whole at the top, and then various elements of the project. Not all of the elements are listed here. This is the other. Well, a lot of people got them and then left long ago. Uh, so on the front, the, the residential tower one, that is the first building that will be constructed. The construction will begin next month. You can see that it will be 400 feet high, 45 stories with 423 residential units. Uh, the schedule for the rest of these is not clear, and it's bound to change anyway, so it wouldn't make sense to tell you now what it is. It's going to, that schedule will change. But, they certainly want to build the towers first. So the two residential towers at 480 feet or 300 feet, as well as the office tower at 528 feet, those will be constructed first. In our comments, Nura's comments, which were jointly prepared along with the Beacon Hill Civic Association and the West End Civic Association, pointed out that the developer is, has scheduled the work probably to get the most profit early on, and that the public benefits, most of the public benefits which are associated with the retail component and the public access to the T and the bus service components, that those aren't even scheduled. We could not get the developer a week ago to commit to a schedule for those pieces. And I believe that you won't see those pieces for at least 10 years, maybe much more than that. David Roderick, by the way, at the back of the stripes, he's on the BRA's impact advisory group. And I have mostly disdain for impact advisory groups, but thank you very much for representing this community faithfully um, serving on that particular group. He did a, he, he's doing a great job on that. But most IAG members are selected because they will not oppose the project. In fact, most of the IAG members at the meeting a week ago got up and spoke only in favor of the development and how wonderful it's going to be not carrying the community concerns that were raised, uh, in part because they didn't even bother to, to know what those community concerns are. They don't attend these meetings, they don't attend any other meetings, except they want to be able to say, we love the project, and represent us by saying that at the DRA meetings. Uh, so we will see over the next 10 years, these three towers go up. The first one again started next month. That residential tower included a small amount of retail space on the first floor. And retail space, we feel, is important because of public accommodation as opposed to privatization. And it also activates the area and creates more of a public realm to these projects as opposed to a gated community. So there was only 1,300 square feet proposed mm -hmm. the, on the first floor because they have decided very recently, and I think it was approved today by the BRA, to convert some of the apartments to condos because the condo market is going up, the apartment market is going down. Uh, they want to create a separate lobby for the condominium. So they'll actually have two lobbies in the building, one for the apartments and one for the top floor condominiums. 
that lobby will be where the retail space was going to be. So we were upset that we were losing retail, some of the retail space. And you give them an inch and they'll take a mile, how much more retail space might we lose in other project changes that come down the uh, pipeline. So we argued for not taking away the retail space. Victor did a great job. David, again, did a great job. And what we got was a commitment from the developer and the VRA to make sure that that amount of retail space was made up in one of the other buildings. But it's probably one of those buildings that won't be built for about 15 or 20 years. Uh, but at least that's what we got. I think that's the most we possibly could have gotten from this developer and from, especially from the VRA. And so that was the subject of the recent IAG meeting, that notice of project change to convert apartments to condos and to eliminate the first floor retail space in that particular building. So the next sheet is just a, uh, it's a rendering of the entire project, and I added the heights for some of those buildings. The retail component that, has, that provides the most public benefit is located sort of on the bottom right corner of the, of the development, and that's where the entrance to the T is, that's where the busway is. Um, I believe our letter is on Matt's blog, a letter of a couple years ago, so if you want to know what Beacon Hill, West End, North End, Waterfront Residence was said about this project to the state's environmental affairs office, the one in that's blog and do a search for the government center garage. The next sheet is the first tower that will be constructed, the residential tower. And the photographs behind that give some sense of what they've been doing over the last year in construction lines. They have made a few improvements to the intersection of Duke Chart and Merrimack Street to change the signalization. I don't I assume that those have helped. I'm not sure. Um, and that's really it. Do you have questions? Is there a timeline on when they come in to open up Congress Street and take that section with the down? There is a requirement that they take it down by a certain date. And I think that date is 2022. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I understand that the BIA, that the developer had to put money into escrow, millions of dollars into escrow, to make sure that that happens. David, I noticed they already started uh, closing down parts of the public garage. Do you have what the, the latest information is? Is that how many garage spaces for the public will be available after the? I don't know the details. All I know is that the total is 20, was 2,300 spaces, and it will be 1,600 spaces. But how many of those 1,600 will be for the police, for the condos, for the office, for the public? I, I don't have those numbers, but they may be available online. Just make sure that whatever new blueprint gets, gets to, uh, made, with the revisions, with the uh, uh, transfer of the commercial space, doesn't get lost like uh, long wolf. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, Vic, if, if Vic is on top of it, that it'll help because Vic just saw that despite the developers and BRA's commitments to make sure the BRA vote included uh, comp compensatory retail space. He looked at the <coughs> staff summary that went to the board, of the VRA board, and the vote the VRA board would take, and there was no mention of it. So, he, so Victor made sure that the VRA staff put that into the board vote. We presume they voted today? Yes, it didn't go into the vote. It went into the uh, description, the five-page uh, memorandum, call the board memorandum that the staff prepares for the um, for the board, which we hope the board reads. But anyway, <laughs> the new uh, sentence that is in that was not in the first draft is 
the 1,300 square feet of retail space being eliminated will be replaced by addition of an equivalent amount of retail space in a subsequent phase of the proposed project. So we have so that to weigh when, 10 years from now or 20 years from now, and the court doesn't happen. David, would you explain uh, what impact, either improvement or negative impact, the uh, the orange line, green line, the terminus is, is having? Because they're actually cutting back on some of the space for the buses, aren't they? Through, through this yeah, thing. we understand that the busway will be quite a bit smaller than it is now. And our comments mentioned that, that they shouldn't be downsizing the amount of space for uh, passengers waiting to get on buses. Also, it looked like it looks like you won't be as protected from the elements as you are today. It, it's not that way today, but there'll be even less protection from the elements mm -hmm. under the new plan. At least that's the way it appears. I wish Ford were here because Ford had some major uh, concerns, uh, voiced major concerns about that a couple of years ago. Instead of them going inside, I think they have to be out on the outside of the whole development along the road there. Just like South Station, at North Station uh, and at the Haymarket, if you ever have a relative who is handicapped, needs a wheelchair, or you're picking someone up or dropping them off, try doing that in a private car or even with a taxi cab sometime. Uh, it's, it's an impossibility, so, and we're actually losing mm -hmm. space to be able to discharge people safely. I'm talking uh, disabled people. Yeah, they're, they, they're proposing to create a plaza, not unlike the plaza that's there now, uh, around the entrance to the orange and green line, but ringing that plaza would be, very tightly ringing that plaza, will be the hotel, the boutique office space, a bunch of storefronts, tables out on the plaza, and the dining tables out on the plaza. So it looks like it's going to be a very congested space, even more so than it is today. And that was in our comments a couple of years ago as well. But all of our comments were ignored. I don't know all these meetings early on. Is there still any talk about covering the a 93 ramp? You know, the bottom ramp? None that I know of. Where the YMCA was supposed to go. I've heard that nothing goes. new on that subject. With the heavy boutique hotels and office buildings right here, they were looking at that 93. You know, that could have been, if, if we did planning in the city of Boston, something like that could have been planned out. Right, that's logical, so it doesn't happen. Yeah, but obviously the developer might be able to, you know, work with the DOC. Certainly the developers are because in a better position the bus than space. the state of the city to do something. You better actually have a bus terminal over that ramp or something like that. You're talking about creativity. Yeah. I'm sorry, David. <laughs> no, I can help with some of the questions some of these people have. Oh, okay. Thank you. Out of the IAG, a lot of this stuff has come up, and we were very mad about a lot of it, but of course it goes in one year at BR and not the other. One of the things you were asking about parking in the garage, they're going to lose about half the spaces. And the reason is they're convinced that the young people that are renting they're allowing space for 850 bicycles inside the garage. Sounds like South Boston. Bingo. And so the whole idea is that they don't worry about cars. They figure they'll all use bicycles. And think about it. In the winter when there's bad storms and people that do off-street parking, where do they go? They used to be able to go to the government's in the garage. A lot of the parking is going to be taken up by the tenants. The people working there, because they're not going to all take the subway and bicycles and so forth. So it's going to be interesting to see. And as far as the buses, they keep making it smaller and smaller, because apparently they just figure that that's all right, who cares? Now they want to just keep making the retail space larger to get more money. And apparently, every time, I, the one that really made us mad is the IAG. Every time they had meetings there, they would never bring, and 
representative from the MBTA. Right. So every time we kept asking questions, how much capacity, how long are they expecting all these people to wait on the platform to get a train? You know as well as I do, these people stand there forever waiting for a train. They're going to start wanting to use their car. So, and the other thing that's a problem is the circulation. We talked about that little area in between where people would be going to get onto the subway. We all know how it is today, people rushing to get to the subway entrance, or they get off the subway and they're rushing to try to get over and get a bus. We kept saying, how are you going to control all these people racing around on their bicycles? I mean, you got, if I was in that government center area, I'd be more afraid as a pedestrian of being run over by a bike than I would be any car or bus. So watch out for that when they start doing that. The other problem is that when you talk about the housing for the apartment building, now that they've converted to condos, it's very interesting. I kept questioning them about security, because even though they're having two separate lobbies, and they're supposed to have 24-hour concierge and all that security, and yet they didn't want to change the drawings to have separate elevator for the condos and a separate elevator for the apartments. So somebody can just walk in, grab it up. They said, well, the top floors, you'll have a special key for the elevator. Well, we all know what happened in South Boston to that doctor. That they had super security also, right? So they're making it like two separate things. But it's going to be interesting. If people are in that apartment building with all their kids, it's supposed to be kid friendly. They've got three bedroom units and so forth. I don't know how they're going to control who gets in and out. And the other thing is about the ramp that you just asked about. And that ramp, we kept bringing that up way back with the construction of the Big D. The state was supposed to allocate money for all of those ramps to be covered. It was part of the environmental because of the exhaust and the noise and so forth. But as one of my people that's involved with the state house, they kept laughing and saying, Money is appropriated, but it never really exists. So that's 31 million that was supposed to go for ramp covers, bypass, it's gone. And I kept asking the developers if they would, because of spending so much money to have a nice hotel right in front of those, I can call it the armpit, that they would put a cover. But the developer says, oh, that's the state now, so they have an easy out. They, they don't want to bother to even appropriate or try to do it. You know how like you've been seeing articles about North Station and how the kids found that thing that the developers are supposed to put money for parks? Wouldn't it have been nice if the developer put money for the ramp cover? But we keep asking, we keep bringing it up. But our biggest concern was all the people from the North End using that site. So we're more concerned about the pedestrians that go over there to use the green, red line, I mean the orange, you know, buses. And they know that it's going to be a three-ring circus. They don't care. So that's, we kept bringing up a lot of concerns and we're very frustrated. I'm frustrated because the IAG, like you said, a lot of them, they sign up, they never, they never bother to show up. And those that do, it's like a love fest. Oh, whatever they want, it's great. So when we protest, it's like, I might as well yell at the wall here. Well, the MBTA has to approve the changes. They don't. They, 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 they have to approve it. They will or they already did. I'm not they sure always they already did. One spokesman, I kept asking and asking and asking. So they finally had one guy that's not an official MBTA. But all he would say is the MBTA says they've got enough capacity. Yeah. Well, but, uh, my punchline, though, is that maybe we should be asking the MBTA to come in and outline for us what the Haymarket public access areas are going to be like in, in the future. What have they approved? Yeah. It'd be good because we kept asking the IAG and they just ignored it. Well, they can be asked to get involved because well, that's not building these buildings, the foundations are up through the tunnel. They're going to go right through the tunnel because some of these buildings are on top of the station. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
So and there, can, they, they will be rerouting, uh, rerouting track and buses all that stuff. and all sorts of stuff. I don't know what's so I think, I think BTA involved in something drastic happens. Yeah, the MBTA definitely is reviewing the whole project. They've already done quite a lot of review, but just not making that review. Okay. And given the, given the uh, congestion of the competing uses, condo and the apartment building and the, what's left of the shrinking bus station, I think the North End should be very weary that over time they don't end up more or less privatizing that space like they did on Franklin Street at the Millennium Tower where finance was to be. Yeah. Franklin, that, that's now a dead end street. So that people in the Millennium Tower could have their own private driveway. And I wouldn't be surprised that something like that ends up increasingly taking away the Haymarket busting over Well, there's no doubt there will be a lot more project changes over the next 50 or 20 years. Usually those changes mean less public accommodation or more private accommodation. We'll see. David, thank you very much. Very